I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend. Today I want to talk about the power that you have within you. Every single human being is born with certain powers and most of us don't even use them. Today I'm going to talk about the power that you have within you to stimulate something called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve has been studied for the longest time and it has something to do with almost every single function in the human body. It's the tenth cranial nerve. It starts off at the base of our brain, travels down our neck, then to our chest, our abdomen, and it touches almost every single organ in the human body. In fact, you should, you should Google to see the vagus nerve. It's a beautiful piece of anatomy. And they look like these little branches of trees that touch almost every part of the human body. Your eyes, your cheek, your face, your heart, your liver, your kidney, and it has a function. It is connected with every organ and the base of your brain because it regulates several functions. So while superficially we look at superfoods, we look at exercise, we look at all of these things, at a deeper root that's called cellular health, you start to look at what your human body already has to protect you, to help you prevent the onset of a disease, to help you heal and recover in case you have a disease. How can we stimulate the mechanism and intelligence in the human body to work for us? That is the future of healthcare. Because we have enough of everything else. We have nutrition, we have medicines, we have chanting, we have everything available. But now, how do we use the superpower within us, which already exists, to work for us? We're gonna to learn today how to stimulate the vagus nerve. It is connected with every function. It is included in the mechanism of the gut-brain axis. As you all know, the gut and the brain are connected with each other. Okay, there's constant communication through the gut-brain axis. The brain communicates with the gut, the gut communicates with the brain, which is why when you have gut problems, bloating, acidity, constipation, you never feel good in your brain. You have something called brain fog, you feel tired, you feel lethargic, and then you try to correct it with stimulants and all of that stuff, but it just never gets better. At the same time, if you have a problem with your brain, you're constantly depressed, you're thinking sad thoughts all the time, you're constantly hooked on to you know, something that is not going well in your life, it affects your gut. You get anxious, you're constantly anxious with news, with deadlines, with work, it affects your gut. It translates into something which people most commonly known as, know as IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome. The moment you get anxious, you run to the toilet to pass a motion. You get anxious again, you run and pass a motion again. So this clearly shows us that the gut and the brain work on an axis that are interconnected with each other and the vagus nerve plays a huge role. If your vagus nerve is active and stimulated, it improves the communication between your brain and your gut and your gut and your brain. So you have microbes in your gut that also con uh, controls the way that you feel. Most people, when they hear the word serotonin, they think of the brain, but did you know that 90% of your serotonin is made in your gut? So when you are treating depression, when you are treating emotional disorders, if you don't take the gut into your recovery plan, you are never gonna get better. Symptomatically, of course, the drugs may make you feel better with all their side effects. I don't have a problem with that. But the whole point of human living is addressing the root cause and holistically healing. So you have to address the gut when you have issues with your brain, when you have issues with depression, sadness, and anything that's a chronic negative emotion. Now moving down to the next system, which is called the neuroendocrine system. A lot of you would have heard of neuroendocrine cancers and neuroendocrine disorders. Again, this is an axis, okay, that communicates with the brain that regulates all your hormones, your glands. So your thyroxine and your thyroid gland, your insulin, blood sugar levels, all of these hormones are regulated by the neuroendocrine system. So it's just not enough to take tyroxine because you don't produce enough of tyroxine. I mean, take it, but there's a lot more that you can do. It's just not enough that you pump yourself with insulin because your blood sugar levels are all over the place. You can take that, but there is so much more that you can do to balance your hormones. Jumping onto bioidentical hormones to you know, replenish your estrogen or your progesterone. Yes, you may need that as a crutch, but there's still something more than you can do to control your hormones. And that is again, working and stimulating the vagus nerve that has everything to do with the neuroendocrine axis. So the vagus nerve, it regulates your breathing, it regulates your heartbeat, it regulates the way you feel, your emotions, your muscles, your contraction, your relaxation. Your digestive system is also regulated by your vagus nerve. You have your blood circulation, your vocal cords, and it plays a huge role in people who have seizures. 
uh, epilepsy, seizures, you have to look at the working of the vagus nerve, which is now being studied medically and scientifically in its role of controlling even seizures. I'm not saying taking them away, I'm saying controlling or making them better. So we have two systems that you need to understand if you wanna make use of the vagus nerve. You have your sympathetic nervous system, which is fight and flight response. Whenever we're moved into stress, the body puts you into the sympathetic nervous system, heart rate goes up, blood sugar levels go up, adrenaline, cortisol, to prepare you for the stress right in front of you. It's a good thing. And then after the stressor is over, you move from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system, again regulated by the vagus nerve. In the parasympathetic nervous system, that's the system we wanna be most of our day and most of our night. Rest, digest, relax, grow, rejuvenate, produce growth hormones, repair cells, boost the immune system, train the immune system. All of that happens in the parasympathetic nervous system where we should be most of the times, especially before we sleep, because you can't sleep if you're in the sympathetic nervous system. Your body isn't designed to sleep when you're in the sympathetic nervous system. It's designed to keep you alert because that's your stress, fight and flight response. So how do we regulate between the two by activating the vagus nerve? The beautiful part of this is while medicine is being studied to stimulate your vagus nerve, there can be electrical impulse treatments and all of these things, certain light treatments that stimulate the vagus nerve. What's the easiest thing that you can do that doesn't cost you money? Right now, on this call, on this video, if you wanna stimulate your vagus nervous system, there's one thing that you need to do out of the many things I'm gonna tell you to do. Slow down your breathing, number one. The most powerful thing you can do. Make your inhales longer, make your exhales even longer than your inhale. So let's say you inhale for four seconds, you should exhale comfortably for six to eight or more seconds. And that's why we practice deep breathing. That's why we practice pranayama, so we get stronger lung capacity to make our inhales long and deep and to make our exhales even longer and deeper. So right now, by changing the way that you breathe, you may have all the stress in the world in front of you right now, but if you can be in control of your breath, which means you slow down your inhale and you slow down your exhale, your world around you may be in stress, but inside, you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, which gives you a lot more clarity to find solutions to your problems. It keeps your heart rate in check, your insulin levels, and everything else. So one is deep breathing, two is chanting, chanting, singing, whatever it is. Okay, whether you chant a mantra, whether you chant a prayer over and over again, vibrations like the Om chanting, it's a specific vibration that is scientifically proven now to stimulate the vagus nerve <clears throat> and several other nerves in the human body. If you don't chant, you can sing. Even singing with different rhythms, different frequencies changes. That's why you, some of you may be able to sing a high note, some of you a very low note. It depends, that creates a vibration amongst your vocal cord whenever you are doing that. So even singing is a beautiful way of stimulating the vagus nerve. You may not sound good, which is why bathroom singers are also extremely, extreme, it's, it's extremely beneficial. People don't have to hear you sing, but sing, even if it sounds wrong to you, but get those vibrations in your vocal cords going for you. Yoga, again, scientifically proved by so many institutes around the world, certain asanas can help us to stimulate the vagus system because there is movement, there is blood circulation and nerves all working together in coordination with your breath. So you have yoga. Meditation, again, is a beautiful way. If you can't meditate, do reflection, deep reflection. If you can't do deep reflection, sit in silence. All of these are beautiful ways to get you into the parasympathetic nervous system and allow the vagus nerve to work for every function of your autonomic nervous system, which is the functions that you have no control over, your heart rate, your breath, your actions in your digest digestive system, when stomach acid should be secreted, when they should stop being secreted, your hunger hormones and everything else. <clears throat> Laughing, beautiful way to stimulate the vagus nerve. So, you know, having good conversations with your friends, watching some stand-up comedy, whatever it is that gets you to laugh. That's why people feel so relaxed when they laugh. They feel so ecstatic, so joyful, so happy when they laugh because you immediately go from the sympathetic nervous system to the parasympathetic nervous system and it's great for your health because it stimulates the vagus nerve. So sometimes even making light of the situation you're in without harming someone's sentiments. But you know, you may have a really difficult situation. The moment you realize it's out of your control, the one good thing that you can do is make light of it. It doesn't mean you don't take action. It doesn't mean you don't take seriously, but if there's something you can't change, 
just laugh it away or laugh through it because you want to at least keep your vagus nerve and your parasympathetic nervous system in force. So laughter helps. We spoke about singing, cold showers. Yes, cold showers really help as well. Now, if you can't have cold showers, even splashing yourself with cold water in the morning when you wake up before you sleep at night. That's why I've spoken many times on videos, I like to use ice cubes. I wake up in the morning, I take two ice cubes, rub it all over my face. I may do it once in between the day. If I'm stressed out, I may do it in the evening. Or I'll just take a cold shower because cold showers stimulate the vagus nerve as well. Fasting. Another beautiful way, you know my concept on fasting, it's smart fasting. You're a bio individual. No one in the world can tell you how many hours you can fast but your own body. So whether it's 12 hours, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, find your niche. But fasting today is scientifically proven to stimulate the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic nervous system. So it's beautiful. And finally, your gut health. Do everything you can to build your gut health. Your vagus nerve is also responsible for fat loss. Now how? How? Because we produce more body fat, especially in our abdominal area, our midriff area when we're constantly stressed. We know the impact of chronic cortisol production and adrenaline, estrogen, testosterone falling, stomach fat, belly fat. You can be lean all over your body, but you hold that stomach fat, that side fat, those love handles and all of that stuff. Again, that could be stress related, chronic stress related. So the more you're in the parasympathetic nervous system, the higher your chances are of burning that fat. You cannot punish belly fat off your body with exercise. You can use diet to some extent, but your diet won't work if you're stressed out because that is a different kind of hormonal induced fat. So when you're in a parasympathetic nervous system, which most of us should be most of the time, that's when we stimulate our vagus nerve. We're able to stimulate our vagus nerve to get into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the place to be, the place to live in. If most of your day is in the sympathetic nervous system, you've got to start making lifestyle changes right now because there is no medicine that can save you. You have to do it on your own by harnessing the vagus nerve activity in your body and you can do it with everything we just spoke about, the simplest, most inexpensive things. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.